Welcome everybody. My name is Christopher Booth. I'm a photographer and an educator that's been working in the photographic industry for more than 20 years. What I wanted to do today was I wanted to review uh, one of the Jim Bay brands of lights, which has been very popular, especially amongst our students, as well as even myself as a working professional. Uh, these lights have been come a long, long way since uh, this particular brand has hit the market in a very large way as they've got quite a, a few diverse models that there are. One thing I noticed is that there is very little information about the DM3s, uh, the little 400 watt digital studio flash that is quite one of their most economical little units that has come onto the market in the last couple of years, at least from 2000 and 13, 2014 onwards. So this is it. Uh, nice compact little unit. Uh, you can buy it but get them or purchase them as a single head unit, uh, as buying them individual heads or uh, the way I actually got this set was buying it as a uh, two head kit which comes with stands, uh, umbrellas and soft boxes. Uh, which was a very economical way, and in Australia that was retailing for sub $800. Um, a quick note to start with, of recently in 2017 when this is being produced now, they have updated this and there is a new DM3 and a DM5 which has come out uh, to basically upgrade from this particular model. But let's talk about this particular model to start with. Um, really nice aluminium housing that it's got all the way around. Obviously polycarbonate front back and a padded polycarbonate front section. It utilises the Bowen's uh, mount system. So it has basically the bayonet system that the Bowen's mounts use and means that you can fit all Bowen's sorts of modifiers and everything attached to them as well as the Jim Bays and other brands that use the Bowen's modifiers themselves. The actual Flash head, they're unprotected, so there's no glass dome in front of them. The modeling lamp is 150 watt halogen uh, running, which seems to do quite well at this particular point. Haven't had any knees to go any much more powerful with the modeling lamp. And in the background, you'll see I've got my second head set up on the umbrella, and the modeling lamp is currently on full power. So uh, in the video, it's probably going to look a bit bright. Flash tube. Uh, is like any other normal flash tube. It simply basically uh, attaches through the two ports here at the front, has a stabilizing section at the back to keep it nice and square, uh, reflector behind it, and I've had no issues with this with these particular products yet. I have had to replace one modeling lamp though. Okay, protective front cover, obviously when you're packing the equipment away, which works really particular well. One thing I would say that they need to consider is they should have made it a fraction deeper because when you have the modeling lamp actually fitted, it protrudes past this opening. Okay, so the modeling lamp sits out a little bit and depending on how rough you are, you can actually damage the modeling lamp even though I tend to look after my equipment. Okay, normal bayonet release that you pull down. Uh, going to the bottom of the light to start with, We've got a good sturdy, it looks like it's made out of high quality polycarbonate uh, and it has metal attachment, metal bolts, screws, uh, a great, I actually quite like this way of being able to change and pivot the head using a very, very oversized wing nut and you don't need to actually over tension it. It does have a very small ratchet system so you can feel the little grooves as you're flicking past it and it works quite well. This section here, is made out of metal and basically has our th screw thread all the way in and actually is a really sturdy base to attach to your stands. Again, uh, attachment screw for when you're using umbrellas and the umbrella dish, which you can see on the light I have in the background. Okay, uh, cooling, these actually have an internal cooling fan seems to work exceptionally well. I haven't had one of these lights overheat or anything like that and I've been using them quite extensively recently on a lot of beauty therapy and shooting, you know, in excessive around about 500 images in approximately an hour and a half 
to two hour period and have never had a light overheat. Okay, now let's get to the main control center at the back. Okay, right here at the back, we obviously have our power input area, our mains on switch. We also have our infrared trigger for when you're working with multiple lights and you're only using the one frequency to be able to trigger it. So this will trigger it through the infrared eye system. From this side up, we have basically a sink lead, uh, our manual dump button or our firing button, our wireless. This has a wireless internal channel system so that we can use a transmitter to talk to the unit. And I'll get to that in a little bit. So that's the wireless button. Our eye sensor for our infrared system on the across the bottom here, obviously minus and plus, really nicely designed uh, power adjustment buttons. Uh, our audio trig uh, signal for when the flash has recycled. We also then have a visual modeling lamp. We can have it in off proportional or 100%. And basically when we're using this, it also will dim the light when it's actually been fired and bring the modeling lamp back up once it is fully cycled, ready to go again. And of course we have our little wireless receiver point, which is just here for our little wireless antenna built inside. So they're actually a really nicely put together system. Um, what I'm gonna do now is let's put some power so we can see the back here. Uh, to do that, I'm just gonna pull off the front protective cover. Um, I've seen many people and quite a few students melt them to the actual heads. Uh, not with these particular brands of lights, but I've worked with the Bowens quite a lot and a lot of students forget when they put the power on, if these plastic things are attached to the front, they can overheat and melt and then it'll either attach to the modeling lamp or to your flash chip, which requires you to get a new one. Okay, so power's attached. Mains power's on, you can see modeling lamp firing away there. Uh, as I said before, we have basically, uh, you'll see that I've got the wireless actually physically turned on. You can actually turn it off, so if you don't want the wireless running at all. So that's the wireless turned completely off. You can press it again and hold it again for another second and the wireless will come back on. Uh, to change the wireless channel is as easy as pressing it short and then simply using the up and down keys to flick through the actual channels for the wireless system. Okay, let me go back down to there. And then just let it go and it'll save that one, okay. Up here is our eye transmitter for the infrared sensor, so with this turned off, another flash fires, this will not trigger now. And obviously we can turn it on, which is quite commonly. Audio, you can hear the little beeping going on when it's going through and then basically modeling lamp, modeling lamp enables me to turn it off on proportional, which means as I increase the power of the light, the modeling lamp gets brighter or 100%. So that's the actual controls on the back. Uh, the other thing you probably haven't talked too much about is it does have a sink port, which is the normal uh, eighth inch, I think it is, little tiny sink uh, connector here. And basically that's if you're using a different brand of transmitters to be able to, or a sync lead, to be able to uh, work with these particular lights. Okay, so that's it for the back of the light. Now let's just turn the power off. Okay, with Lenny light, obviously, when you've been using it for a fair bit, allow it to cool down. Fuses go in here. These are like most of these sorts of studio lights these days. They'll actually carry a spare fuse inside this holder. You pull it out two drawers, the second drawer furthest in is the one is the active fuse. Okay, so that is the DM3. Really nice, very cost effective, very efficient, well made studio flash. Now, if you're buying kits or you're looking for a transmitter to work with this, um, Jimbay actually make one. This is the TRS uh, 2.4 gigahertz model. And this little uh, radio trigger here that I've got just here will enable us to be able to adjust the power of the light. So um, let's just turn it on. So I'm holding down the flash button, little red light comes on, and then it starts blinking 
to say that it's currently active. Now I've got this set to the light behind me. So if I now press the flash button, you can see that it's firing the light off in the background. The other thing I can do from this little transmitter, which is really great because they're not very expensive, I think they're about $40, is I can change the modeling lamp. I can turn it off and turn it on. Okay, off, on, and that brings it back on at full power generally. Okay, now if I want to, I can also increase and decrease the output of a light using the simple minus and plus buttons here on the actual transmitter. So at the moment you can see I've got it set to about 2.0. So I'm gonna bring this all the way down. It's at the bottom. These lights have an automatic dump. There it goes. And now that's minimum power. Okay, now if I wanna go the other direction, I simply just keep increasing the power of the light up. Let's go up to five. There's not all the way, six is all the way. Okay, and obviously because I went up, there is no dump required. And now that is the full power sort of dumping thing. Okay, so that's the great benefits with using these little transmitters. You've got up to 15 different frequencies that you can work with, as well as zero. Let me bring this back down. There we go. So, oh, drop it on the desk, still works. Now, some people from a bit of experience uh, hearing a bit about these particular things who are having some little issues with these little transmitters. I did have a little bit of an issue with this transmitter when I actually did got it. Um, what I ended up finding it being uh, when I delve into these things a little bit more is that the earth connection through to the circuit board inside was basically not a nice secure solder joint. Okay, it actually, when you pushed on it, it actually popped up off the surface and that's what I found was the fault with these particular ones. So Jimbei do need to look at their quality control a bit with these little devices, but they do have full warranty and everything, you can take it back. Honestly, it took me less than five minutes to fix it. I've got my own soldering system at home, simply just re it or just warmed it up until it actually connected cor correctly. And it has not failed since. So really nice little unit, quite happy with it and um, it does what it is to turn it off. Basically, same as turning it on, press the power button, hold it down, and you'll get a light come on solidly and then off, and that's it, she's turned off now. Okay, right here. So that's the review on, or my review, on the DM3 uh, Digital Studio Flash equipment. Really nice, nice and compact, not overly huge in size, really good ergonomical shape. 400 watt seconds is probably an ideal sort of uh, power output for somebody new in photography working, especially in portraiture and studio or even doing some commercial work, small commercial work. Uh, in the progress, I have ordered some 800 watts in a different model that are coming soon. Once they arrive, I will do a review on the 800 watt Jimbay that I'm purchasing as well. Uh, there have been some big upgrades, so have a look on their website, which which you should find just by doing a search for Jimbo uh, Studio Flash Equipment. They are a Chinese-based company. And don't let you think that that's an issue because a lot of stuff these days is made all over the place. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the Australian Institute of Advanced Education and especially their studio space here, which is known as the Australian Institute uh, studios. Uh, lovely facility they've got here. They work in both uh, photography also in film and TV. So thank you very much for allowing me to use their particular space. Also we will be looking at bringing you more reviews and more in, uh, tutorials from this space hopefully in the future. So keep watching. Hopefully you'll find these interesting and again thank you very much to the uh, Australian Institute of Advanced Education uh, for the loan of their particular space.